wow, it's like like getting some sort of award or something. So okay, I will say so, it does feel good when any calls you that. Oh my god, I'm not, I'm ten percent kidding. <laughs> it's like I do it, it for was, the people. The, the, I do it for the people. Yeah, I know. I, I get it. It's like, but now you've made me a little. Bit <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Oh, hello, Jeans. I'm so happy to be here. It's Dr. Drew After Dark. Keep those emails coming at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com and the uh, voice messages, which I just uh, can't get enough of. 818-253-1693. And uh, merch. I hear the Rational Revolution cups are back. Uh, Store.ymhstudios.com. Is that right, Nadav? Sure They were sold out for a while, and uh, Susan was very upset about that because <laughs> she wants to see. And and let me be clear. You know, People are like, when is the Rational Revolution beginning? Blah, blah, blah. Like every revolution, it, it, it begins slowly and quietly. It ho- has begun, everybody. Understand that the, at the core of the rational revolution, if you remember what Christine and I were talking about, was the ability to have rational discourse and not get canceled and not get judged and just be pragmatic and challenge things. It's on now. Things are starting to come back. People are starting to be rational again. They've gotten over their COVID frenzy and uh, kind of over their Trump frenzy a little bit. Uh, though that still percolates, of course. Uh, and people are beginning to speak rationally about complex topics and not just all A or B. They're talking and having discourse. Um, I, 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 I think good evidence of that is uh, Dr. Fauci is beginning to consider other things other than his conventional sort of um, sort of axioms. So, so uh, here's the deal. Uh, we are, again, I'm going to listen to your voice messages, and I have lots of videos to get into. I am very, very, very excited. And, of course, Booth Boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's up, baby? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> oh, any of the sound of that voice just <laughs> makes me so happy, my friend. Uh, not not that, Nadav, you don't make me happy. You do, of course, too. And I know Zolo's in there. That, so we have the A team. That's what it sounds like to me. A team in the house. A team here today. I think we know your favorite booth boy at this point. Uh, you know, we've shared some intimate moments. And uh, it's kind of hard. <laughs> to, it's hard to overcome the intensity of that relationship. It's uh, You should know that I told bitches be hating. You know that I told I told Tom about our conversation a little bit, and he was like, "And he needs therapy. And he needs therapy, right? Right? He needs to see somebody." Yeah, but I, I, mean, this I told you he wasn't gonna like talking about that. <laughs> yeah, didn't, this isn't news, though. We, I think we all knew any needed therapy. Everyone here needs therapy. <laughs> I well, there's yes, everybody can benefit from therapy, but I, it's just the. What are we going to do with Annie? How are we going to make him better? You know what I mean? I mean, you, you have to have you have to have goals and expectations for therapeutic interventions. And Ooh, what are our goals and expectations I, for Annie? I, I, I'm not sure. We we talked about exposure therapy back when he was poised over the toilet, right? And nope. uh, that might do him some good. But I I don't think. Wait, I, would you exposure understand? therapy for any be someone forcing him to touch his ass to the toilet seat? N- n- yes. Exposure <laughs> therapy. I volunteer as No, tribute. exposure therapy. <laughs> like one day we'll have him. Oh, this is going to sound terrible. But but one day we're going to have him like reaching into drains, you know, and putting his mouth on drains and things like that. Because th- this the drain that has him all panicked, yeah, right? Yeah, I could force his head on a drain. You literally nope. couldn't pay me enough See? money <laughs> See? to I get know my that's mouth right. on but, a drain. No, no, but here's the deal. Penny, it's to fix you. No, it's so no. it will, it will come up and fixed. pull your tongue out. <laughs> it It's down there, right? The clown is down there ready to pull your tongue out. Something's ready. Something's down there, so, man. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's not down there is my mouth. It ain't down there. Uh-uh. So, not so yet. It would be done in a, in a of course, a sterile manner and that kind of thing but but listen it, it's 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 what i want to get right at that because in tom's idea and he needs like his psyche worked on and i'm like no no and he's fine and he is cool and he is any and then he's good but he has these they're kind of phobias and and we could deal we could help him with that through exposure therapy in small doses my friend so the first thing would be you know just looking at toilets and then it would be getting closer to the toilet seat and then be putting your hand on the toilet seat. and you'd have a therapist there working with you the whole way dr nadav right there if, to help i i would recommend the dav not be that person i would recommend that not be who it is but that's kind of how we deal with these things i think tom's idea which i i disagree with you know what I mean, Eddie? He, he's like thinking, Eddie needs to get fixed. Eddie needs to, something's wrong with Eddie. I'm saying, no, no, and he's awesome. I've signed off on you from the beginning, right? No, yeah, you, you hear you've me. Been, yeah. You've been my hype man, and, yeah, yeah. and now I'm your hype man in yeah. return. Yeah, uh, well, you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> call me something else. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I was your N-word. 
<laughs> Wasn't that what you called Drew, me? you can't say that. <laughs> I can't say it. You said it. You can't say it. that. You said it. Drew. No, dude, you said it. I'm just saying. That's yeah. what I, you can't even say that. You can't, I can't even, uh, you, say you that. Can't okay. even acronym it, well, my nigga. Okay, okay, okay. So that's cool because I appreciate that. And I and I really need schooling on these things because I, I don't want to... I want to do what's appropriate so i apologize if, if i've stepped over a board no, but i did appreciate nah. being called that. no yeah it's 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 my favorite thing actually yeah. um in, in growing up and and being uh half black and half white basically even though i'm not but anyway yeah it, it's the coolest thing because yeah i get to brighten every white person's day yeah whenever i just say yes. any anything xxx my nigga they're just oh me yeah that's me what happened to me yes <laughs> yes I not, I, it. not just anybody has called me that it's very quite an exceptional thing i felt like wow it's like like Getting some sort of award or something. So okay. So what you're saying? I'm the first one to call you that. I'm the first one to say uh, that. With, on. with the with the level of enthusiasm that you did, <laughs> uh, and, and I'll always remember. And I thank you for that. So I will say so, it does feel good when any calls you that. Oh my god! I'm not. I'm and I'm so only like. 10% kidding. It's like I do it, it was, for the people. The, the, I do it for the people. Yeah, I know. I, I get it. It's like, but now you've made me a little bit. <laughs> like, I don't want to get I don't want to run afoul of things. You understand? You're all flustered. I don't want to run afoul. I want to stay on the right side of what's right. You know what I mean? You get me? Eddie, help me. So uh, <laughs> No, you, <laughs> you you did good. You did yeah, good. Yeah, I'm an old white dude. What the fuck do you expect? What the fuck do you want from an old white dude? So so Whoa. Your intentions are good. How did we get here? Um, yeah, my intentions are good, but that doesn't matter, right? It's like speeding without a speedometer. Right? You're still speed. We're speeding. You know what I mean? And so I don't want to. I don't want to. Please be dummy. Blah 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 blah. No, yeah, I don't want to be speeding. Blah 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 blah. Um, uh, I, I I respond well to direction. Let's put it that way. When people go, no, 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 you don't go there. I was like, cool, I don't go there. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's um uh you know honestly though like at the end of the day even if because because I'm I'm fucking with you like it's not it's not a big deal uh to say that but it, it probably is right it well I mean is. to to some I mean to you know everybody's gonna be offended by something but right, like right. it's not a big deal to you but I think to most people okay. but um it, it's it's really it's more about how you say what you say yeah, yeah so the fact that I knew that whatever you just said had no you know negative connotation yeah to yeah it, yeah. It was actually it's it's, it's the about, big thing. It's about sharing and delight. It's yeah, the delight I have, exactly. Which is, exactly. Maybe that's even wrong. I I don't know. I'm trying again. I'm trying to stay on the good side of all this. Um, You're on and the right and side by the way, I I you know it, it, I had to get schooled, right? I mean, you don't you this this is all right. Serious for two seconds. This is at, at its core. This is what white supremacy is all about. I'm not talking about skinheads. I'm talking about Eurocentric, not appreciating other people's points of view. And if you're not listening and open to it, you you will your perspective will take over, and you don't want to do that. You want to you don't want to be clutching your damn pearls over stuff. You want to hear other people's perspective, adopt it, and move forward. You know what I mean? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. I All agree right. with this. All right, Danny. Man, Danny. I thought you were going to say that white white supremacy comes from just wanting to be called the N-word. No, no, no. <laughs> it comes from not... I, I'm dead serious about this. It comes from not paying attention. Uh, and, and I don't think we define it enough and clearly. It was, it was, it, go read the words of Frederick... Uh, this is all serious now. Go read the words of Frederick Douglass. If you want to get clear on shit, he will, he will straighten your ass out. Uh, and that was 150 years ago. And uh, he, he, he helped me. And then since then, I've just been listening, listening to my, my friends. And so back to Annie. Um, so I'm, I, Tom thinks there's like some psychological thing. I, I, I don't agree. I don't agree. I think this is more in the sort of phobia zone. And uh, if you should ever want to fix it, and that's up to you, right? It, it can be fixed, just for the record. All right? I mean, I'm down to do like, you know, steps very small steps that don't involve the dove shoving my face into anything yeah, no, like no, no, never no, no, had no 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 the dob needs to be some other state or something like when you move to austin maybe we can work on this no yeah <laughs> and he's gonna move to austin with me okay too. well <laughs> stay away from the dob while you're down there um but but there it's a really pretty simple thing too i mean the, this exposure reprocessing therapies uh, really, really work, and they're only sort of modestly uncomfortable because they make sure it's stuff you can tolerate, and then they they kind of have you doing more and more extreme stuff. So because your your phobia can drift back in, 
So they have you doing, that's why I'm saying things like reaching down a toilet and putting your face by it. it sounds, sounds incredible now to sounds you. Impossible, the impossible, dude. right. Impossible. And, but I'm, but trust me, they, they take you there in steps and pretty soon you're doing this stuff. And so I, I, it's, it's funny. It's a good, it's a good learning opportunity. There's a lot packed into what I'm saying here, which is that, that people need to understand what therapy is and exactly what they're treating and exactly what their goals are. Uh, and just because somebody has something and you go, oh, they need therapy, it may have nothing to do with their internal psychology. It may be just a, a phobia or an OCD thing or a panic around something. And that stuff is is dealt with in very, very specific ways. So let me talk about vaginal depth. Um, I will occasionally hit my wife's cervix with my penis during our marital relations. It causes her a slight pain when it happens. And it got me thinking, women in porn can put 12 to 15 inch dildos into their vagina. How is that possible? I understand that it's about six or so inches to the cervix and that the vaginal canal can actually extend quite a bit to accommodate sex and a baby, sir. Uh, but can it double or triple in size? What am I missing here? Scott, what you're missing here is the, <laughs> the vagina is not just used for your sexual pleasure. It's used to deliver a baby and the baby's head uh, is about 10 times the size of your penis, maybe 20. So uh, just, uh, I, I know it, it's so funny to me because men won't often think of this because it, uh, it's diminishing. You mean that can handle a baby's head? That's what it is for. Hungover, horny, and hard. Man, we have good emails. Again, it's uh, drdefdark at gmail.com. A couple weeks ago, someone emailed or called and said that the day after drinking, they have erectile dysfunction symptoms. I was curious why or how the complete opposite happens to me. It only happens if I have a night of drinking a little more than usual. I feel terrible, but I get super horny and super hard all day. My girlfriend uh, asked, me, asked me what has gotten into me. Just curious on what the causes are. Don't forget to try it out. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure I can give a, a, a really clear uh, reason, except that when you're in withdrawal, your sympathetic nervous system is turned on, and for you, that might include arousal. Also, uh, if you're an alcoholic, sometimes people are looking for more high after they stop drinking, and sex is one of the things that will give you that. So uh, one of those two things, or both, is going on. Sex during pregnancy risk. Uh, 13 weeks pregnant. These are good emails, everybody. Pay attention here. Hell yeah. Yeah, and then we're going to do a little, some videos and voicemail. we got a lot to go into. Um, my girlfriend is 13 weeks pregnant. Everything is absolutely great regarding our relationship and pregnancy, but we have one concern, sex. My girlfriend occasionally feels sore after sex, like cervical depth pains. But it's a big day for vaginal... How, how deep is your vagina? I dick her down. How deep is your love? It's not every time, but more often than either of us would like. I have an above average length, uh, not some freakish monster dog. Thank you, uh, Kyle. Uh, I have an above average length, but outside of discomfort during sex for my pregnant lady, is there any risk to the baby? Sex is super neat, but neither of us want to endanger our baby. Thanks for helping people for the last however many decades. So I'm guessing any, you would have uh, sort of feelings about this too, because this is, again, a similar zone to your toilet uh, sort of a drain thing. You know what I mean? Is that something you have feelings about? Shit, I'm not going to lie, man. I've been disassociating for the past like 10 minutes thinking about touching a fucking <laughs> sewer with my with my mouth. I literally didn't hear the question. I don't know. <laughs> I have not been listening at all. Okay, let's bring you I'm back. so sorry. Let's get you back in your body. You're back in your body. I take back everything I said about you not needing therapy. So anyway, so yeah, let's get you back in your body. Back you here. This man is saying he's worried about hitting the baby in his pregnant wife. Like they, she has some pain. During, during sex and she's 13 weeks pregnant or let's say more, is that something you would feel weird about? Oh, still, fuck, dude. Yeah. I just did it again. I literally, <laughs> I promise you, I just did it again. I literally, I, in the middle of you talking, oh my God, I promise this isn't a bit. He's just clicking off? <laughs> this is, I, it's li like the minute you start talking, I'm just like, I mean, I so, can't, there's no way. So I'm guessing, so I'm guessing, so, so let's, let's try it this way. Is what I'm talking about what's triggering you? Or are you still triggered by the exposure therapy conversation? I, I think it's when you're, well, I'm comfortable at, at switching and doing the job that, that I do. So yes. it's like the minute that I have to go back to doing that and not talking, I just start thinking about whatever else I can stress about I right see. now. Okay, good. And so as you're talking, I don't have to, I don't have to perform, you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. just off I see. I see. You and, use autopilot. Okay. Yeah, well, I need you. I need you. Okay. Okay. I'm here. You. I'm here, baby. Okay. All right, what's up? <laughs> one, more time, one more time. One more time. <laughs> so this man has sex with, when his wife is pregnant. Do you have any feelings about having sex with a pregnant woman? Does that freak you out at all? Um. I mean, I've never done it. Would, would uh, you think it would bother you? Like, if she started having discomfort or something during sex, would that be like, ooh? 
Would that trigger? Would that cause you to dissociate much in, like you did seconds the, ago? In this situation, would it be Ennis baby or not Ennis baby? Uh, it doesn't really matter. My question. Hey, I'm huh? wondering. Uh, well, okay. Let's. I'm going to make any dissociate again. I'm sorry, but 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 you, can you? Um, I mean, imagine in Ennis mind, there's a potential for that baby to be like the clown on it. You know what I mean? Going to grab his penis or something. Oh my God. Oh no 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 no. no. The, okay. I don't go there. Definitely okay, okay. not. Wait, uh, that can't happen, right? No, can't happen. So, can't happen. Right, cool. it's, if, that, if, if the baby could reach out, grab the pain, if the penis, the baby's coming down the canal. The, the, the cervix is tightly closed. So it's not impossible. It's impossible. Oh, Stop right? it. If there's an arm going down, we have a medical emergency, essentially. Uh, but but the the fact is that, that sex during pregnancy, right, let me just answer his question. This is for Kyle and Kendra. Uh, sex during pregnancy is fine. Uh, unless you're at a high risk pregnancy, like you have some complication or multiples, or you know, uh, you've you've been losing pre pregnancies during the second trimester, and you've had a cerclage or something, then you might be told not to have sex. Um, what's interesting about what God has done with pregnancy is that women are typically sort of aversive to sex for the first six months, and then really into it the last three mon months when they're huge. Uh, and that's when you can keep doing it if you wish, um, it, unless there's again preterm labor or some complications. So talk to your obstetrician about that but uh, and make sure we don't give the mom any stds sir uh but otherwise uh let's see if i ask this question uh outside of his comfort is there any risk to the baby no there's no risk to the baby to ask your question let uh, let us see where shall we go i'm so many good videos up ooh. there mm. Ooh, you know what because mm -hmm. we're talking about dating and stuff like that i think yeah. i have the perfect one for all right me. let's do it I need some talks too. Some t I need. A I'm five three. How much do you weigh? That's none of your business. I told you I was fat. Oh, okay. The, the, we don't play that shit on my channel. You get your big fat ass on somewhere then. I don't deal with you big sassy ass broads. Yow. You think you can get out here and be like Danny's big ass? Go knock yourself out. But I would be remiss to try to tell you as an image consultant and as a person and a professional that you can be five, three and weigh so much that you don't even want to tell somebody how much you weigh and think you're going to get a man to marry you, a high value man. So you go ahead and go on back over and get your two piece or three piece or whatever you got coming from, you know, Chick-fil-A or Popeye's. Or, yeah. Carry your ass on over. I don't know. Well, this guy's pretty cool, right? He is very cool. Uh, I love him and fuck that guy. Uh, all the above. Um, he is certainly cool. And, you know, his, his, he's a marketing expert, right? How to create the most availability of men in the marketplace. That doesn't necessarily mean you're always attracting the guys you really should be uh, getting involved with. And plenty of guys like uh, smaller than average, larger than average girls. Plenty of guys do. So anybody, any of you guys into... Uh, it's a lot. It's a very common thing. I mean, it's, it's more than people not, realize. It's definitely not ruled out for me. See how yeah. you are. See how you are. Uh, ouchie on balls. I have a small bump at the bottom of my balls that I've had for a few years. Sometimes it turns into a blood blister, and I can pop it in the shower. Good job, man. And drain the blood, but it doesn't get smaller or bigger. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes uh, I can't feel it at all. I've checked for ball cancer for other reasons while having this lump, and it was negative. Any ideas? Uh, I believe I believe I'll be coming up in May. Um, God, I almost feel like we should watch his uh, Ed Asner's video again because people have slowed down a little bit. Are they all be coming up on May? So we need to refresh their palate with that. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe it's just this this uh, these Maybe last these... couple emails. Okay. Don't worry, they're they're still, they're still out there. All right, good. Um, I don't know what this was. It might. Uh, it, there are little things called cherry angiomas you can get. Uh, it has nothing to do with cancer. It has nothing to do with anything inside the ball. So cherry uh, angiomata. Angio you want to look it up? Is it cherry magnolia? Cherry angioma. Angioma just means a cluster of blood vessels or a blood uh, lake. No, 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 no. Angioma. A N G I O M A. There it is, right down there. Uh, let's see one image. Um, yeah, see, oh, that's not so that, bad. that one way over on the right is sort of. Oh, kind of okay, show cool. It's nice to see. Yeah, that, they're not bad. It's nice to see that these things appear not exclusively on the dick and balls and puss. Correct, isn't that nice? <laughs> and I don't think they do occur on the puss, by the way. Oh, but they mostly look like that one that where your cursor is right there. They, they mostly look like that. That's what they kind of look like. Well, after spending last summer on the sidelines, we want to get back out there, and we're going to make this year's lounge season an epic one. 
So Bespoke Post is here to take your sun sand surf game to the next level with a new lineup of must-have box of awesome collections for men. Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From summer styles, grooming goods, travel gear, outdoor gear. You know you've heard me talk about the travel gear and the outdoor gear. And you can get multiple boxes that serve your needs for all aspects of the summer season. They have collections for every part of your life. To get started, you take a quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers then help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Each box costs only $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. And you can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Dr. Drew at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com. Code Dr. Drew for 20% off your first box. Uh, magnets on my dick. All right. I got to keep reading this because they're so good. When I was about nine or 10, I had some magnets that fell off a toy. At this time, I was not masturbating a lot. <laughs> nine or 10. Good job. Uh, don't see his name here. Uh, magnets on your dick. Uh, well, though I didn't really know what it was, meaning masturbation, I was still ashamed about what I was doing. Well, one day I decided to try and balance my penis in between the magnets that slipped out of my fingers and clipped the skin just below the head of my dick. Too ashamed to tell anyone, I endured the worst summer of my life. I was constantly red and inflamed, but there was never any blood or pus. One day they just, they fell off? What? Can you guys make sense of this? Wait a minute. He's saying he put he put magnets on on like two ends of magnets on the I, outside of his I, I dick. Yes, it, it skinned it. How? I, I, I How strong are those magnets? Or it stayed on there? That's what I can't figure out. It was constantly red and flame. They fell. They. What is they that fell off? Now I have. It two, sounds like magnets. Now I have two holes in my dick skin that I what? don't know if they are connected. I have told go girls, to the doctor. What type of BDSM is this? <laughs> I, the I don't like of, this. I've told the girls it was a result of piercing. I love this guy's style. Brilliant. Uh, I took out the piercing and there it was. I come super quick a lot. has nothing to do with this. But sometimes I last forever. Also nothing to do with this. Do you think this is something I should consult my doctor about? Keep my eye tight. Uh, I think you should have a doctor look at it just so we define what this is uh, or send us pictures. Um, do not send us pictures. But um, I think that it's a nothing. I think it's a nothing. Uh, but good for you. Uh, Wait, so like... So he probably just kind of nicked his dick and then probably jerks off too often for it to heal, right? Nicked his dick. I just like the the uh, alliteration of that. Uh, that is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, he say it again. I'm so I'm like Andy. I'm dissociating now. So what did you say? He nicked his dick. So what? He nicked his dick, uh, and he just keeps on. He like. Yeah, he, he, kept jer on, he jerks well, off too often, he, so it just he, doesn't he, heal properly. Right. He's, he's 12, 13. What do you want? Did I have you some kind of terrorist? The guy's a ad young adolescent. Of course he's going to keep masturbating. Yeah. Which, by the way, speaking of uh, adolescents masturbating, um, did either of you have a reaction, or let's even bring Zolo into this one, to uh, Dr. Uh, the head of the CDC, Walensky, saying that her son age 16 is so preoccupied about going to camp. It's all he thinks about all year. It's like pulls... You know, he marks off the calendar every day waiting to go to the camp. And uh, my reaction to that is that, uh, no, th that guy is not worrying about camp unless there's something there that he likes because he's yeah. busy masturbating every day. I mean, he's oh, 16, yeah. right? <laughs> well, at camp, he's going to be busy fucking every day. That's probably the truth, but I think he, she's in massive denial about what a 16-year-old male is doing with his time and his uh, fancies, with his fancy. Any Zolo, can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any, I don't have to ask you. Uh, okay. Uh, let's keep going. Aching Morning Wood. This is the, the love line part of this I enjoy. Hi, Hitlers. I am in my early 40s. In the past few months, typically at least twice a week on average, I wake up with morning erections that are painful. Good morning, my dick. Good morning, my dick. Uh, you and Colty. Uh, most other days of the week, I still wake up with rock hard stiffy, but no pain. It almost feels like a strong tightness, like my cock is moments away from literally exploding. Is this normal? Should I be concerned? Thanks, mommies. You bet I'll be coming up in May. Piss on me and beat me. Yeah, you're right about the coming up in May. Um, Corey, I wish I understood your age, but yes, this is part of being an adolescent, uh, young adult which is that uh, morning wood, so cold, is a very normal thing. It's caused by, have we ever talked about this, Nadal? What causes morning wood? Um, I don't think, is it lack of jerking off? 
No. Nope. That can't be. Not Definitely all roads not go that. there. <laughs> Uh, it's certainly the pain he's experienced in the morning may be from that, but usually if you're building up sufficient amounts of semen in your seminal vesicles that you're having sort of, uh, blue ball-y kind of, you know, lymphatic, uh, congestion, we call that, uh, God will take care of it during the night and you'll have a nocturnal emission. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's not having nocturnal emissions. He didn't say that. He's just waking up with uncomfortable erections. The erections at night are caused by... A spinal cord reflex that is part of bladder stretch, so your bladder being full. Also, your bladder being full prevents the lymphatic drainage from occurring normally. So some of this, and also your sleep cycling creates a certain amount of these weird erections that are just normal part of sleep cycling, whether your bladder's full or empty. So there, and then of course, in time since previous discharge, you know that's also part of it as well. Mm. You can get priapism. You guys know what priapism is? Never uh, heard of it. That's when you get too oh. much piss in your balls. Uh, it's what some people call clinical boner. Uh, my, my cat would just call it that. Priapism, it, the, priapism, P-R-I-A-pism. Yeah, a prolonged erection. Here's the here's the formal definition. Persistent erection continues for hours beyond or isn't caused by sexual stimulation. Priapism is usually painful, although priapism is an uncommon condition overall. It occurs mainly in certain groups, such as people who have sickle cell anemia. That That is actually wrong. Uh, it, it occurs in most in people for medication side effects. Right, like, I remember. I remember this one from the uh, from late night TV when I was a kid. That that old motherfucker swinging the golf club and it was like the whistle song. Oh, and it was that's like, a Cialis commercial. Cialis, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, like, one of the complications. Dick, yeah, one of the complications. Yeah, and and wow, priapism. you remember priapism from the side effects of the end of that commercial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. They're like call your doctor <laughs> if it's more than whatever the fuck three four hours or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Did I tell you any was exceptional? Did I tell you that? <laughs> hey, man, there's some things that he's just crazy good at. <laughs> a lot of things. Shitting ain't one of them, I guess. No, nah, I'm really I, good at shitting. I, 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 do it that I, I, would, you know I, I do know what you're saying, and I think Andy is absolutely right, Nadav. What's the matter with you? You're, 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 you're misjudging. Um, so, uh, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I have a question yeah. for you, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, about, I, I never mind, sir. Awesome, good. I, I have a good one for you. Um, so, speaking of getting hard, uh, on planes, when 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 you're taking off, like right when you're yeah. not not uh, right when you are in the takeoff, so yeah. you you take off from the ground and you're yeah. about to be in the air. Yeah. Uh, that's when, like, every single time, you I'm raging hard. Okay. Why is that? Okay. Do you have like a scientific so, explanation? Wait, for that? Now, at a, takeoff, a, and anybody, landing? anybody tra- only at takeoff, anybody at takeoff. anybody traveling with any, you now take note. Know, know what you're sitting next to here. Yeah, yeah I, I usually times. I usually tell them. I'm like, hey, you want to know something cool? I'm hard as shit right now. First time I'm hearing about this. Yeah, you, you never sat right next to me. You always sat like across the aisle, oh so it was a little too far. I would have told other funny. people that didn't to get to hear. T- touched by it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's, yeah, touched by it. Uh, so, so, wow. Uh, so, multiple reasons. Um, some of it is a conditioned response, right? You, this is something that happened and now it's sort of conditioned into you with the stimulus, right? And we are highly conditionable humans, uh, these kinds of mechanisms in our body. But I never fly though. I know. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And that's one thing. Secondly, uh, there's a lot of, you know, your, your heart rate goes up and stuff. People get a little nervous during the, during the uh, takeoff. And that's a sympathetic discharge. I talked to you about earlier that that can cause sexual arousal. Uh, and then there's also the vibrations of the engine, that sort of thing. That that makes sense that there might be some arousal associated with that. Um, do you find, are you usually like holding your urine and that kind of thing? Like, oh, I got to wait till the plane gets in the air before I can pee? Um, no, I mean, okay. you know, if there's anything I'm known for, it's it's holding as long as I need to hold. I, I, I understand, right but if I understand that you're you're a withholder, I get that. Mm-hmm. But but <laughs> but I, I, I'm wondering if the urine doesn't have a similar pattern to it where you withhold you know, into exceptional territories, and and that would do that spinal reflex, put a little stretch on your on your bladder, and that would t- tend you towards erection too, right? I don't I don't think so. The only reason I wouldn't say that would be it is because it's uh it's always at the same point in takeoff, so I don't okay. think you know well, I, I could I, imagine my bladder was the same in all those. Okay, I I know that for some reason, two things I wonder. Uh, uh, a for me, it always seems like by the time we're taken off. You know, it's never on schedule. It's always like I'm always thinking, why didn't I take a piss before I get out there? You know, I'm I'm always waiting for the planes. The, the seatbelt sign is off so I can run to the bathroom. It seems like that happens to me all the time. So I'm that I'm guessing that happens to other people. Number one, number two, does your issues with uh, the toilet drain factor into urinating? I mean, do you have to stand a certain distance from the toilet and that kind of thing? 
Um, no, 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 is not, there, not is at it, all. Is it uncomfortable being around, even standing over the toilet to urinate? Or, um, do, or do you take the position where you're standing on the rim? Is it something we should know about how you urinate? No, no, I, I, I oh, think, that's, I, think that's, I... That's crazy. How would I ever, <laughs> why would I ever think of that? He just lies flat <laughs> on the toilet. <laughs> oh. So I, no special I, procedures for urinating. Mm -mm, I, I okay. think I piss normally. I mean, I wouldn't yeah, know. Well, who knows, you know, right. I, I, I thought that I shat normally up until, you know, a yeah. year ago. So oh, well, that's, <laughs> look at this. That's a stretch. Here we are. But, yeah, here we are. Uh, which is really, it's, it's, it's a really interesting model for all humanity. It's like, uh, check in with everybody, everybody. Um, <laughs> but, but, but I'm wondering, do, do urinals freak you out the way toilets freak you out? Um, I mean... Same thing. I'm not gonna touch them. You know what I mean? Like I'm definitely not gonna touch them. But why not? They don't have. They don't have the drain. You know? Yeah, they do. They, they got no, the they drain. No, they often they often have like a plastic thing and yeah. You know, but they're but it's it's usually a thing with a bunch of holes in it. It's not something where the it hand can come yeah, up and get you. A bunch of holes that you can't see the other side of. I see. Okay. You know okay. Got it. Got it. Got, I understand. So it's mm -hmm. it's the unknown down there. How are you with like skin diving and snorkeling and stuff like being in the ocean? Is that a problem for you? I mean, I'm black, so there's already some some stuff working <laughs> against me on that. But, but I mean, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the ocean. <laughs> doesn't freak you out the way the toilet freaks you out, though. Uh, well, it it does. When I see the ocean at night, it is a fucking okay. It's a trip. So yeah. the dark unknown is something that really bugs you. Okay, got it. It's very interesting. And, and then it is interesting. And and I'm wondering if uh, the toilet in the airplane has any special issues for you. I mean, I've never gone to the toilet in an airplane except to masturbate. So. Yeah, you, so you got your priorities straightened out. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I mean, everything else I can hold, but <laughs> look, well, I got to come. Yeah, go, I, know, I, I understand. Go. And that is maybe the craziest fucking thing I've ever heard. How dare I, you? I did on <laughs> our flight. First of all, the dog. How? I did on our flight. Dare you? You jerked off on the flight. On our flight to Florida. Both. <laughs> <laughs> just let that what settle the in. Fuck. Just let that. Just let that sink in, Nadav. Just let it sink in. And in my head, I was like, if only Nadav knew what was happening right now. Well, you, the dog said. knows now. And, and now you know <laughs> when, you're, when you're sitting next to him on the next flight, uh, he is fully uh, erect and he's aiming towards a discharge a, a soon. And, hold and, on, hold and on. Should, I hang questions. on, to, to Dom. I know you do, but I just want to let this all sink in. Should he go to the bathroom, you know it's not to pee or shit. Okay, go ahead. Ask your questions. So you have muscles that are able to hold in your pee, hold in your shit. But when it comes to holding in your cum... It's not a muscle thing. You're just... That's not a muscle thing. Dude. Yeah, n number one, it's not a muscle thing. Please yeah. tell this, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> How do you not know this? But, but, but I want everyone to know that's not a male because all males go, wow, impressive. All females, their heads explode. They're like, what? No, no, no but look, it's... I understand, like you said earlier, like the the... You know, the junior high, the high school kids that like wrote in or, or yeah. called in earlier. Yeah. That I get. That's like, you know, I jerked off on a plane to Israel. That was like 16 hours. And as soon as I got out, there was a huge line and there was a lot of shame and I'm probably never going to do it again. But the older you get, you're like, I could wait two hours. Okay. So I could wait for, three first hours. Of all, first of <laughs> to all. To come? <laughs> yes. Mm -mm. Yes. I can't wait three hours to piss. I can't wait three hours to shit. If the feeling comes in, I got to take care of it pretty quickly so, so <laughs> how in the world do you guys sit in the same booth together and get along it's just me and any are are complete polar opposites homie it's, i don't know <laughs> yeah it's, i don't know we drive each other insane we constantly baffle each other insane. with the ways that we think but i i would say it's it's a perfect union like exact opposites on all things <laughs> but i mean thin not so thin Light colored skin, not so light colored skin. It's just you guys are everything. Everything's opposite. Hold on, did you just call me morbidly obese? <laughs> no, I said not so thin. Uh, but somebody else has called you that. I'm just saying. Um, so I'm fascinated right, again. CDC you guys, has. you guys take me in deep every time. I, I can't resist. Uh, so here's the deal, Nadav. Your everyone has different ranges of sexual desire, right? But do you think what Annie's doing is normal on planes? I know a lot of people that do it. A lot. 30 year olds? And, yes. Yes. A uh, lot? And, and, but you also deal with uh, addict people that are addicted. Uh, yes, most of, <laughs> most of them are recovering addicts. Uh -huh. I, in fact, I can't think of any that are not. But, <laughs> oh, that, that, but, but I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not, I don't I'm not, like that catch. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not, I'm not putting you in that category. Because uh, those, yeah. guys, those guys also look at porn when they go in the bathroom in the, in the uh, plane. 
Uh, and any, well, not, any, any, you pay for Wi-Fi when you get on the plane, right? Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> you want to know something funny? Mm, that's want, why you got the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wild. Want to huh? know something funny? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody has by now figured out, oh, man, you know what I should have done before I got on the plane? I should have downloaded my fucking music, right? Everyone's everyone experienced that at least once or twice now, right? Yeah, yeah. Up till now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I figured out a new thing. Porn. I should have downloaded my fucking porn. You can't get porn to porn sites on, on oh, planes. Did you know oh, that? I, did, I did not. Wi-Fi, thank you. They won't as let always, any is always <laughs> clarifying things for me. I didn't know. I didn't know whether these other gentlemen... Uh, w- was watching live streaming or whatever, or where they had downloaded something. Now you're enlightening me that they have to pr- plan ahead and download. Although these guys usually have lots of material on their phone anyway. That so. and 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 trust me, man. If you want to, f- there's a way. Like the I, I when I learned that mistake, uh, How long I that? still figured like, it out. You know what I mean? How, when did that happen? Uh, when I found out that I couldn't do that. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, I was working for a different company. It must have been like 10, 10 plus years was ago. That the Russians. No, no, this okay. was before. I was in an office job. Yeah. What? I was just, I, yeah, I, I was uh, flying up to NorCal for, for something. Yeah, for, for, the, for work. What, what did you do? What kind of work? Just fill, fill oh, out the whole story. I mean, it's the most boring story. Please. You could have, there's a reason why Not I'm doing what us. I do now. But, Not for uh, us. It's, it's, uh, there's a reason why he'd always jerk off on planes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, the job is just so uninteresting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I had a, a bathroom that I specifically went to in the building that I, that I used to jack off at. Yeah, of course. It was, it was the best building. Oh, my boss is going to be real mad if he watches this shit. <laughs> Let me tell you. Hey, I listen. You have, you have to. Wh- why should it be any different than urinating or defecating? You know what I mean? These are bodily functions that need to be handled. If anything, it's better. It makes you feel better. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> Imagine how irritable and aggressive you would be if you didn't do that. Absolutely. So what was this job? Uh, it was. Um, oh, we we worked with the DOT. We were we were. Um, what was it? Um, uh, shit. Uh, auditing. We, we we used to do mock audits for. Um, auditing financial companies. Financial. No, audits? for uh, for safety regulations. So like Regul- drug testing, you were a inspections. I was an inspector. I was a drug tester. Absolutely. Yeah, wow. Yeah. It was so boring, dude. You were the man. I mean, uh, right? Uh, I guess shit, dude. I didn't feel like the man. <laughs> you were the man. You were you were bumming the high of these poor drug these poor uh, truck drivers just wanted to get high at the truck stop once in a while. Yeah, you know you know what it was too. It wasn't even that they wanted to just get high. I felt bad a- after a while because they didn't. It was because they wanted to work more. Like as a as a yes, truck driver, that's right. you you would have to go on sleeper berths and shit yes, after yes. like thirty six hours. You couldn't just drive. They don't. They won't let you just drive from fucking. You know, New York to California, yeah. you, ha- you have to stop and take a sleep yeah. break. The, the reason they that. did that is the way the guys would just drive was they'd get going on some meth. It, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. so they, so they used to do meth and yeah. it was just to work. So, I, so I, it's I a reasonable that. regulation. However, I get your concern, which is that these guys just want to do more work and you're, you're not letting them. Yeah. Just let them do meth. I mean, it's, it's a little bit it, of meth. The problem is, the problem is that they would get psychotic and that wasn't <laughs> I'm just good. Kidding. I just want to, I just want to know that I'm kidding. <laughs> well, number two, they'd also fall asleep behind the wheel, of course. And that's the really bad thing. Oh, even, yeah. even on meth, you can fall asleep. Well, they, they, yeah, they, they're not so much on meth because it, it, you know, if it starts to come down, they're not really aware it's coming down and they're just, because if you haven't slept for three days, it's hard to judge where you're at. You know what I mean? Your body will just go sleep even on meth. Right, right. Yeah, so, you start to get delusional. I get it, you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is awesome. Uh, and he was the man amongst other things. So, uh, wow. And, and that was the job where he learned, that was where you learned your, like, what was the first time where you were on a job and you're like, I should go to the bathroom and jerk off real quick. I mean, that was my that was first, job. like, real job. So that one. And how far into that job you're like, I'm going to take a walk on the wild side today. Like week one? Yeah, like Saturday. Holy I don't know. shit, dude. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, it's, it's, it's a priority, man. <laughs> so, Nadav, you haven't asked the, the – I mean, your interviewing skills are, are impressive, but you haven't asked the real question, which is uh, what goes on in the bathroom on the other side of this door? Well, look, uh, I already know that he has big phobias of being in places where people take – gigantic dumps and uh i'll tell you one thing that's what happens in that bathroom but he, so. he, has, he has also told you that that's the, what happens in every bathroom <laughs> you hear what he's saying there i, I speak yeah, yeah. i speak fluent any look but and, he, but he doesn't have a quiet bathroom to go jerk off in. everyone could hear what's going on in that bathroom. i'm telling you quiet. yeah <laughs> nadab you, you you, you're I'm, in denial man you're you, in massive you, denial you just you, don't want to realize what goes on in that bathroom 
I, it, it, the you fact is, you misunderstand my skills. My man. <laughs> and, and also, you miss you're 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 not quite getting his motivational systems, right? His the, the sexual desire and the need to release trumps everything. It, it will it will it will assert itself in all situations, right, Any? Yeah, I mean, and yeah. and and yeah. to answer the the question that you asked earlier of, I can hold piss and shit but yeah. not come. Yeah. It's a different thing. No, well, no. The answer, yeah, I sure could. I'm never going to though. You don't want to. Yeah. Okay. What's the point? Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I, if I wanted to release the shit in the piss, I would do it all the time. What's so, the point? Is that you could come in a place that's more comfortable I than could, an I air than an airplane bathroom. I could do that in a couple hours. Yeah. I need to do it right now. <laughs> and in a couple hours. Do you still think he's normal, Drew? There's a difference between normal and exceptional, Nadav. <laughs> I mean, exceptional. Wouldn't you rather? So you're be, encouraging this. Wouldn't you rather be I'm exceptional hearing? than normal? Isn't that sort of the zone we all want to achieve? Middle of the road's fine for me. I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> you've got it, and so and any automatically is in the exceptional zone. There you go. But again, opposite <laughs> opposites for you guys. But we we have not yet established because Nadav, you are obfuscating this fact. Is uh, that bathroom has seen a little love, not just a little, but a lot. And you sit on that can, sir. Well, uh, well, we know that any doesn't, right? I know, but he, that's because he that's because he does other so things. So if he's in like there. hover jerking off on top of it, I mean, that's whatever. I don't look. Here's I'm fine with my butt. If, you, if you've Eddie's ever seen him touched. go in that bathroom, you know what he's doing. I do. I do uh, usually ask whenever I see him go out of the bathroom, like you just take a shit. You and the answer is very frustrating. The answer is always no, but yeah, of course. I think I have a new question for you when you come out of the bathroom. No, <laughs> why are you questioning? Why are you questioning? Because I want to know. <laughs> We've established that is the only thing he does in that bathroom. Maybe urinates. Maybe. Right. I urinate. Yeah. Yeah. So yellow or white. Okay. Just say yellow or white. Maybe you have a little little light. You push a button. You yellow light. White light. These are scary answers I don't want to ask the questions. Good. I'm, Thank you. You know what? I'm going to stop asking. Okay. <laughs> see, I knew you. I, see, I could tell you were sort of avoiding this territory. It bugs you. Next up, we have a new perspective on performance apparel, Viore. They're perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional workout gear. Everything is designed to work out in, but doesn't look or feel like it. It's so damn comfortable, you'll want to wear it all the time, and I literally do. Uh, there is uh, one shoot in particular they have that is in my rotation for uh, daily gear under a, under a sport coat as well as for workout. I just throw off the coat and I'm ready to work out. And Viore is 100% offsetting their carbon footprint. They're also reducing and offsetting 100% of their plastic footprint from 2019 and beyond. They're utilizing better sustainable materials for their products and empowering your best active life. And I'm telling you, it does not affect the quality. Their stuff is great and it's easy to find the product you want on the website. In fact, there's too much stuff I wanted. I had trouble picking exactly what I wanted, but I was not disappointed with one piece of clothing. I wear them all the time. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Drew. That is V-U-O-R-I.com slash Drew. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash Drew. Again, that's V-U-O-R-I, viore.com slash Drew, and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. So, I mean, Andy, you keep being you, man. You keep doing it. You too, Drew. <laughs> what you. are we going to do? Vote Dr. Drew. That's, Let's go, baby. That's right, baby. When are you running for governor, man? I'm trying to vote for you. Um, I, I'm i loosely contemplating the general election, but but I, I definitely don't want to do this this runoff thing. Um, but I might think, if California does not get his shit together, I'll feel obliged to do something. This, this state is a mess. And you guys are going to be living in Texas. I'm going to be stuck here. That's all good. I'll hide yeah. man you from any right. any state. All right. Don't, don't get your residency done until I have a chance to run for governor. You got it. Uh, hello, my name is Andrew from Wisconsin. First of all, big fan. Love the show. Whole family that's involved with it. Really? I have a question, curiosity. If you've ever heard about someone's Adam's apple or something really close to that area, slipping to one side of your throat or another. It happens sometimes that my head is turned in one direction or the other while yawning or swallowing causes a pretty decent amount of pain. While it's out of place, I have to physically grab it and pop it back. It almost clicks back into place. Not sure if anyone else has this issue. Have you ever heard of some of the stories? Andrew, I have not. I mean, your your larynx is cartilage, so it can move. Uh I wonder if the hyoid bone, which is a little lower here, is somehow those muscles are moving around a little bit. But I've never had somebody complain of that. So congratulations, but I don't think it's anything serious. How about a voicemail? Mm. 
Yeah. Voicemail. Hi, Dr. Drew. I am a 23-year-old male who is 5'8 and 105 pounds, and I have a rare eating disorder called avoidance. Mm. It has nothing to do with self-image. It comes from having terrible acid reflux as a child, and basically it means that I'm stuck in the cycle of getting hungry, losing appetite, eating, and then feeling sick. Uh, I desperately want to put on weight, but I've always been incredibly skinny, and over the past few years, my stomach is shrunk, um, and now I can only eat about a half meal at a time. Uh, what can I do to combat, I guess, the nausea that accompanies mm-hmm. um, hunger? Mm-hmm. And what can I do to just try to put on any kind of weight at all? It's such a, right. a particular and special eating disorder that I can't even find really specialists that know yeah. what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. Thanks. Keep right. them high and tight, and you bet I'm coming up in May. You bet, buddy. Uh, Connor. So, uh, Connor, I'd like you to meet any who has an avoidance issue of his own. And uh, those What's of up, you. Connor? I love you. Yeah, man. That's what I was going to say. And those of you that uh, pointed any and go, these, these are the kinds of things that happen to people. And, this, and Connor's got another version of this. Um, this is actually a really serious thing, right? Because your nutrition is very, very important. And uh, I would say you want to go to like an OCD specialist. Again, it's, it's funny. Today's show is all about. Uh, avoidance and exposure. That, that's really what this the theme of the show has been today, strangely. Uh, and I would say one, if, if you were to start eating again and not having nausea, you would still have those avoidance instincts kick in. So you have to have somebody there with you helping you with the exposure to this. My suspicion is the best way you ha- would have to deal with this is through some sort of high-calorie continuous liquid diet, like whether it is whatever you can tolerate, whether it's milkshakes or milkshakes and other nutrition ground in somehow that, that again, you're going to have to experiment and find the thing that you can constantly sip on without causing the nausea. The problem is your avoidance phenomena is going to not let you do that constant uh, ingesting. Um, so uh, again, an OCD specialist, you might try the IOCDF.org. That is the International Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Federation, IOCDF.org. They have lots of resources there, and I bet you you'll find somebody, because they have everything, and I bet you'll find this thing there. You probably even find something for any there. Probably even, it would be interesting to go to, IOC, go to IOCDF.org. And let's now, see. I and then a... look up toilet drain. <laughs> Dude, seriously, we'll go up, let's see if it has anything. What's your question while you're looking it up? Um, would this be something like, because if, if he's having an issue getting food in his system and and becoming nauseous from it. Yeah. Now, this is probably a stupid suggestion, but would would maybe if he's in a state that where it's legal, would maybe like getting weed in the system and using munchies to try and like yeah, force that's, food? Yeah, that's actually a, a good thought. That's that's a good thought, and and uh, you also could try other anti-nauseals like Zofran, things like that. But but pharmaceuticals are not going to be a long-term solution to this, right? This is a lifelong pattern. And while sometimes those pharmaceuticals can help break the pattern. Now look up uh, like toilet bowl or toilet drain, see if something comes up. Um, and uh, good thought, Nadab. Uh, again, pharmacotherapeutics can be useful, but they are not the long-term solution. It goes, anxiety disorder comes right up. For toilet bowl, what does it say? I can't read it. Uh, attention modification program. Yeah, that's just treatment anxiety, of anxiety. Disorder. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Uh, okay, let's hear one more voice message, and then I'm going to go back to some videos. Hey, Dr. Drew. My name is Elizabeth. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I am an aspiring funeral director or mortician, and I just have a post-mortem question for you. So while I was doing mortuary transport a few years ago, my coworker and I were exchanging crazy stories, and he told me about a man who was quadriplegic his entire life, and after rigor mortis set in, my coworker said he quote-unquote roly-polied into a ball onto the cot. And I was just wondering how bad rigor mortis could affect someone that's a total quadriplegic. It's something I never really considered before. And I just wanted to see if you had anything to kind of say anything more about it. All right. Love you. Butthole, 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 butthole. <laughs> well, thank you, honey. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I, I don't have a strong idea about this except to say that, you know, a long period of quadriplegia changes muscle physiology dramatically, both from the standpoint you know, it turns out that neurons are sort of nutrients for the, they, they supply a certain amount of 
import, let's just call it nutrients for lack of a better way of describing the physiology at this point. And when the nerves are cut off, the muscles atrophy. It's not just from disuse. They also they change their physiology rather dramatically. And as you know, rigor mortis is something that's usually sort of a straight position because people are kind of in that position uh, when they often pass away. And the rigor mortis, you know, comes up and then it goes back down again, right? You guys know that. Wait, uh, so rigor mortis uh, gets you in a position that your body naturally wants to be in? It sort of becomes a rigid position of whatever state you were in when you died. Uh, and in this case, she's saying that there was some sort of contracturing of this guy. I wonder if he was already contractured. You know what I mean? He may have been already highly contracted up, which is something that happens in people as they have these sorts of uh, central brain problems. They get contracted. So I'm going to bet he was already very contracted. Um, so look up contracturing and you'll see that you know, there's all kinds of stuff that can happen. Oh, you're going to look it up. Contracturing can get, get pretty nasty. Uh, let's just look at images. Uh, yeah, you see all that, Nadav? You have, look at the one at the oh, top. Oh, cool. It looks like it's mostly kids, rat. Yeah, this is not, uh, not eh, right. you know, it's just, it's gross and it's awful. And it's what our joints do when they're not properly um, stimulated by nerves. And they just, we just, we just contracture in various ways, again, depending on what's going on in the central nervous system and what's going on in the spinal cord. So that's that. Enough about that. Let's get a, oh. let's get a, let's get a nice uh, cleanser with a, a video of some type. All right, let me see what could be fun for yeah, you. Yeah, fun for you. How about a horrible or hilarious? Yeah, I think yeah. you'll like that. Yeah, okay. let's see what you think. Because I was thinking a lot about ho horrible or hilarious during the weekend, this last weekend, and I was thinking, what is wrong with me? They're all horrible. They're all horrible. How can That's I? That's a how... normal reaction, Drew. <laughs> no, what has happened to me is what I'm asking. What has Tom done to me? What? He, he has like moved me into this weird state where I can look at horrible things and go, oh, that's hilarious. I'm, I'm disgusted with myself. Let's I told you, man, you're getting really cool. <laughs> we, we've, dis we've discovered this already. You've gone through cool school. Cool school. Ooh, that's an interesting idea just by itself. I want, <laughs> next live show, I want a whole episode on cool school. All right, here we go. Horrible or hilarious? We see a man climbing on his roof trying to fix a window. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 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 <laughs> Oh, that's a broken leg. But, Class, classic but, hyperextension, but right, sort of hilarious. Yeah. Well, no, I think there was more than that that went on. I that's think, funny. I think, you think this is hilarious? It's awful. It's on the. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I almost threw up when I saw this oh the first my time. God, poor guy. Um, but but you notice he grabs his ankle. See. And so, I don't think that's intentional. I think that's gravity helping him get there. No, 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 no. After this, watch. <laughs> and, you, and you hear the break. See, he's grabbing the. He, he either yeah, got a tibial plateau. He's just holding. He's reaching down for his legs. It looks right. Like. He either had a tibial plateau or a tib fib or both. tib fib. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And so, um, good times. Good times. I mean, the good news here's here's now why hilarious enters into my lexicon because I look at it and I go, dead or not dead. And if it's not dead, then it's hilarious. I, that's that's how bad it's become for me. You understand? <sighs> Nothing hilarious about any of this. He's had surgery after, immediately following. Yeah, man. I don't know. I've had, I've torn my ACL, and any type of leg injury just immediately takes me back to that pain. Good. Like, All right. So you don't what do you mean good? Hilarious. Well, good. You got some empathy. You're not saying it's hilarious. Good. It, I have some empathy. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. In, in, do you think that's your... a compliment? <laughs> yes, I do. It's not. <laughs> in your words, Nadav, it helped you build some character. Yeah, you have some empathy and some oh, character. Yeah, I, I got tons of character. Right, give, me, give, me a, give me a TikTok. Do we have any interesting TikTok? I, I have found, by the way, cruising around TikTok a little bit, some some avenues that uh, Christina P. would be proud of. There, there's a lot of cool people on TikTok. A lot. You don't uh -oh. even know it. I'm working in the supermarket. I'm just coming back from work right now. With a good mind, everything was cool today at work. And uh, for the people that tell me, hey, how can you look like that? You are a fucking mess. I don't give a damn fuck. I don't even read the comments. I just look at it, I scroll down because I don't have nothing to say. Yeah, it's my life. I got three beautiful kids. I'm almost 34 years old. I live in Germany. I oh. got my own apartment. I got three beautiful kids. My oldest one is 14. They're proud of me like shit. And I'm proud of them because they're my angels. They're my everything. They're all I got. And for the people that come in and like, um, oh my God, what a mess. <laughs> oh, dude, you don't have to give a damn. You don't even have to put a comment. But I mean, 
I love her. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. She reads a lot more normal than most people in Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> and, well, she's German, right? I, what is that accent? That she is that something that she picked up maybe over here or something? I don't know. Something tells me that like this sounds like one of those uh, like multicultural international accents where she yeah. probably moved around a bunch. Yeah, of Yeah, I'm like picking up the German chick that grew up in Philly or something, and and, uh, and good for her, whatever. Uh, and there's something appealing about her. She's not cool at all. Even though this is kind of a set category of cool? No, yeah, you expect her to be cool, and then she starts talking, and you're like, oh, no, wait, she's yeah, no, no eye, no teeth, right? Yeah. Everything's cool. She's Everything's like okay. She's pretty but, normal. But can you, can you read anything on those tattoos? I can't. Um, I can't. It's all like written backwards or something. I, I don't know what yeah, that is. Yeah, Russian. Oh, yeah, it's probably flipped. Yeah, the, the face can is flipped. Oh, of course. Jesus. But you know what? We can't be. You know what? It's a lot of this looks like it's in cursive. That's probably why I'm having. Well, I was going to say. You know, mostly when people get face tattoos like that, see if you get a straight on view of her real quick. They they don't put words all over their face like that. She's got words all over her face. Well, and, these kind of just look like doodles. Yes. And some cover ups. Like there's just a gun over one of her eyes. And then a sheep and, under her eye. Uh, is that a sheep or something? I was actually. Rose. That looks like. A, oh, I was going to say that looks like a cover up. Like she. There's yeah, it looks like a cover up. Like an too. X's name under there. And she's like, yeah. oh, let's cover that shit Ooh, up. But nice. That's on your face, though. It could be a cover up. It's definitely supposed to be a see, Rose. Now, see, I respond to her kind of the way. I, this is going to sound. I don't. This I say this with peace and love, my friend. Here we go. I, I, I respond to her the way I respond to any, which is like. This is an interesting person. This is a unique person. All that stuff means something, uh, but it doesn't mean quite what people think it means, I suspect. Much like any shitting doesn't mean what so you a, hear, people think it means. You know so, what I mean? So you hear about any shitting and coming patterns, and the first thing that comes to mind, you just see this lady's face. No, I just see his <laughs> shitting and coming patterns as separate things that any has, much the way I see this expression on her f skin as this thing thing this uh, this thing that she has that's not really i don't know i'd love to talk to her that's all again you know i get that i get that feeling all the time about a lot of cool people but uh like give me another one another tiktok good for her i like her sign yeah, off and, i sign off at her as we say and and just so uh just so you know yeah. uh real soon you might be more similar than you think maybe the next tattoo is gonna be right up in this area actually oh my god drew do you even know what do you mean oh, yeah. i don't think he knows <laughs> yeah. i got my first tattoo man where uh, it's on my back. It's a. Uh, it's just a little thing. Uh, I think we have a picture of it. Oh, let's give me a picture. Yeah, let me let me set this up. It's a little thing. It's gonna be a fucking angel wings or something all over your backs. Yeah, it's just you know a little I'm, thing. I'm afraid of a lot of stuff as as we've discovered, and yeah. one of those things is uh, spiders. Oh. And uh, yeah, and another one of those things was getting a tattoo. So I decided to conquer both of them oh. at the same time. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So wow. This is it. Dude, <laughs> that's his first tattoo. Dude, <laughs> ask him when he got it. Do you know when he got it? <laughs> Three hours before a five-hour flight. Ow, man! <laughs> How long did it take to put that on? That was eight hours. That is, you know, the filling in all that black must have hurt like hell, right? Oh yeah, that, that was uh, that was one of the most painful experiences it, it, of my it, life, it and goes, it continues to be, by it, the way. <laughs> Oh, how long ago was that? that it was, still hurts. <laughs> yeah, it still hurts. This way a few weeks ago. <laughs> I, I bet it's like it's like a like literally like he fell off a motorcycle. You know what I mean? All over his back. It's like a scrape. Like actually, that. I fell off a motorcycle. It's worse than that. Yeah, yeah. It's probably <laughs> it's a little worse. deeper. Have you been treating? Like, have you been putting ointment and stuff on it? I mean, no. Uh, so you haven't been taking care of it. And you're uh, like, I wonder why. How this could still he? Hurts. How could he? Where are you gonna say reach? I wonder. Gonna, I just said it hurts. <laughs> how are you gonna reach that? Is it is it done as we see it here? I feel like there's a little more stuff that needs to be filled in. Is that true or no? Uh, a little more stuff that needs to be filled. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you might be looking at the what's supposed to be the shadows because um, oh. those are because that's like not that's before healing, so everything is super dark. I see. I but see. The shadows will kind of fade. I as, see. Okay, it got goes, it. Yeah. Got it. I understand. And so, wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and and big and big shout out by the way to my to my tattoo guy uh his I think it's Scott Simakek and if and if, if you right if you Instagram. look in the mirror do you freak the hell out like if uh, you you know look at your back no 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 so I this mean is, I there, still it's still like I forget you know so my question is did this work right did you did you are you now no longer afraid of tattoos because you went all the way to the mat on that and are you having better results with spiders because of this. Uh, with the tattoo, definitely 100%. I'm ready to get 
a ton more anyway. Okay, okay. Um, spiders, hell no, not even close. Okay. Yeah, I didn't do anything for that. Okay. Did you get high but, you know. with all the pain from this? Some people got kind of high from it. Uh, I don't think so. Not really, no. okay. Yeah. Uh, and... Get, talk me through the process where you came to the. I got to get a giant fucking black widow on my back. What? <laughs> what? How did that happen? It's. It, it was. Uh, long story short, I've been wanting a tattoo for forever. It mm -hmm. seems like, and I just kept making excuses as to why. Nah, this one's not perfect because it's yeah. not going to matter in a year. Or yeah. this one might change or whatever. This one, I, I need to find the exact perfect artist and whatever. And uh, so I just decided I got to stop making excuses, and the only way to, that I'm going to do that is if I go all the way and make it like a thing for myself okay. so that it's not just like I'm going to get a tattoo. It's like I'm going to get the fucking tattoo. An experience, yeah. So, this is gonna, yeah. This is a defining tattoo. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But you still haven't told me how you got to this one. What was that process? Oh, uh, it's a bunch of things in one, but the, the, ex the exact like... Um, Thinking. The, the exact image is from an uh, an anime show. It's and, called and Hunter did, x Hunter. And did you see? It? Did you? Hey, hey! Why are you hey. laughing, Drew? What the fuck, man? Because because I'm thinking. <laughs> I was thinking. I was actually thinking. My my thought. My thoughts. Things flashed through my head. <clears throat> and what flashed through my head was. Thank God this is what he got out of anime because I, I I people have shown me things like look up shitting nipples. Uh, and oh, oh, here we go. Oh, trust me, man. I mean, Anti's Anti's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen this specifically, but uh, oh boy, How yeah, we could show that. No, crazy. Don't, yes. Do not cut to this. <laughs> no, oh my god. Yeah, it's crazy. This one's got dicks for nipples. Yeah, right. And then yeah, it's, it's right. Out shit, that's right. It's shitting dick nipples. That's what it is. I, I can't, can't even. My head won't Jesus. even do it. How did you get? How did you find um, this? One of you know, yeah, Mike Catherwood went to destroy me. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. And uh, and and that's what flashed through my mind. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ. When, uh, oh boy, this is opening a whole new lane for us. Uh oh, this could be a your mom's house thing. Right? Yeah, it looks like I know what to uh, Google for the next heavy segment. Oh Jesus great, God. glad I could inspire oh my content. God. Oh my God. Oh, there's God. foreskin on these nipples. Yeesh. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah, oh, I can't stay. Uh, but but okay, let's just uh, thank our thank thank you, dear God, thank you, God, that you didn't expose any to that, and that's what he put on his back. So that's what I was thinking. So, so you, you saw this one thing on a hentai or something and that you thought, that's it. I'm going to go get that. Is that it? You said a fucking hentai. It, uh, or whatever. It, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I saw it on anime. It's the character that has it on his back. Actually, there's a Oh, so it wasn't like a spider monster thing. It was somebody, you saw a tattoo on somebody's back and thought, that's cool. Yes, it, okay. it, was, it was a I tattoo that I copied um, I that I just I took, I took my own artistic taste on it. Yeah. Okay. With that, with that palate cleanser, I will say farewell to you all. This has been a great show. We thank you, Booth Boys. We, we thank, thank you, you, Drew. We thank you for the uh, for the voice messages and the emails were awesome this time. I've still got many more to go, uh, but keep sending them. Uh, you guys are great. We appreciate it, and and I hope you understand that. Again, I, I keep repeating this, but this is a new opportunity to sort of revivify or modernize the old show love line we used to do this is a way we're going to sort of answer your questions and we'll get to all any and all of them just make sure you send them to us at 818-253-1693 and also drfdark.gmail.com and do get the merchandise the rational revolution is emerging store.ymhstudios.com everybody get that rational revolution cup that that is iconic iconography and it's going to mean something to us as we look at what we've been through in the last five years in the rearview mirror we're going to be rational again I'm here to tell you, it's slow, but it's coming. We'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.